Hey everybody, Bill Sky, the C++ guy, here today with my last video on pointers. This time we're going to talk about dynamically allocated arrays, and we're going to start off with a program I wrote that keeps track of all of the puppies that my wife and I have owned in the past, and actually not owned, I think they've owned us, but we just love dogs, we love animals, and I thought I'd put together this, this puppy structure and show you how we store it into a normal array, and this is all something you should be very well aware of, but why this might be a problem using a non-dynamically allocated array and how we can fix that with a dynamically allocated array. And then we're gonna talk about a dynamically allocated array of puppy pointers. So there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff in here. I've got code already written, however, we are gonna be making changes to it and I will make this code available to you uh, on the uh, on the discussion board. I'm sorry, not the discussion board, but the description of this project. It's going to be a good video. Let's get started. So what I've got here is I've got a little program that reads this puppy file bin file. Now, if you don't remember what a binary file is, it might be a good idea for you to go back and take a look at your previous your previous courses or videos or maybe even my C++ introductory video on binary files, which I haven't done yet, but this might be, you know, six months from when I actually recorded this. So go back and take a look at that. And just as a quick overview, a binary file is a file that really is not ASCII based. It actually has numbers in it instead of the ASCII represented representation of those numbers. So I'm on Linux right now. If I right click on that, I say show in terminal terminal, um, I can see it down here, the directory, and then I can actually say ghex puppy file dot bin and it's a binary file. You can see some text in it, but the the numbers are not textual. So for instance, uh, over here after Jack Russell, after the breed of the dog, you actually have some data, which are the numbers that represent that animal. So if we look at the structure that I created here, we have a structure called puppy, and there's two C strings. There's a name C string of 24 characters wide, whereas there's a breed C string of 24 characters wide as well. Then there's an age in years and a float, which is the weight of the animal. Now, if you were to just store this in a normal ASCII text file, it would actually take up more room than you needed to take up, so the file could get quite large depending upon how many pets you've owned, but it's also very in, in, inefficient. So you really don't want to create strings here Every puppy in this case will be the same size. So if you take a look, we've got 24 and 24, that's 48. Uh, an integer is normally four, so that's 52. And then I believe a float is also floor four, so that'll be 56. So each puppy will be 56 in size. So you can do things like random file input and output. You can do all kinds of really interesting things when you're dealing with a structured file record an actual structure, it's almost like an object. So that's why we use C strings in this case. But let's look through this code really quick. So we've got this simple little structure. We've got my clear kin, so when the user types in a number, it won't uh, screw up the CIN buffer. And then we've got a little function called print puppies that takes an array of puppies. And this is something that you should have done in the past. It takes the size of the array or the number of items in the puppy array and then it prints it out. Very, very simple output. And in fact, it might be a good idea for us to just go ahead and run this. So this little menu, and you'll see this in just a moment, I'm just gonna say read from the puppy file, and it does, it reads from the puppy file, it shows the name, the breed, look at how nicely the report is formatted, it shows the age and the weight of each puppy. And then the program goes back to the menu, and then I'm gonna exit out. So let's take a little bit closer look at this code. So I've got a bunch of variables here, not too important right now. This is the important variable right here is the puppy array. I created a variable or an array 
that has 10,000 puppies in it. And these are static puppies. That means that each puppy will take up, I believe I said 56 bytes. Even if my file only has three puppies in it, it will still take up 56 bytes times 10,000. So I believe, what is that, 560,000 bytes, whether I've got one puppy or I've got 50 puppies, the array is always gonna be absolutely huge. So this is why static arrays might, might not be a good idea, and we're gonna walk through how you can use dynamically allocated, allocated arrays to make them better, but let's continue to look at this code. So I simply have a little welcome, and then I have a little while loop. As long as the user doesn't type an X for exit, it's gonna continue. Then I've got a little loop right here, that, which is the menu, so it makes sure that the menu item has been entered in correctly. If it's not an R or an X, it gives you an error message and it displays it again. So once the menu is done getting the menu option from the user, and right now we only have two options, read and, and exit. But So what happens if the user types in read? Well, we open the file as binary. We keep going as long as the file does not fail, or as long as the open didn't fail. And then we set our position to the, well, let's actually not look at this code right now. Um, I'm actually gonna delete that. So we open the file, it didn't fail. So what I do is I read each puppy one at a time. I read the first puppy. Notice there's a puppy counter. It keeps track of how many puppies I have in my array. So I read a puppy. While the puppy file is not at the end of file, I put, I create a temporary puppy, which I read into. So I read into this temporary puppy variable. I assign that temporary puppy to a location in the array at puppy counter. So the first one will go into zero, the second one will go into one, the third one will go into two and so forth. And this assignment right here, this will copy the temporary puppy into the puppy array. I increment the counter, I read the next one. As long as I'm not an end of file, I keep going, I keep going, I keep going. Then I close the file and I print the puppies. So let me go ahead, now that I took out that other code that I really didn't wanna go through just yet, let's make sure everything works. So I'm gonna read. And oops, uh, what did I not do right here? So I must have taken out some code that wasn't right. Let's see if we can figure it out. So we open it as input. Um, let me make sure that I haven't destroyed my puppy file. Nope, it's still in there. So there's something wrong with my code here. Let's debug this. So if it's read, we open it. If it hasn't failed, we say puppy counter equals zero. We say puppy read inter, in, inter, reinterpret cast temp puppy, the size of a puppy. Um, we say puppy counter of zero is equal to temp puppy. We go to the next one, we then read it again, and then we close. Well, that actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go in here and just print, I'm gonna copy off my C out, and I'm gonna go down here in my code, and after I read a puppy, I'm gonna print that puppy. So I wanna make absolutely sure that I have a valid puppy. Now this is a good example of, you know, debugging, or actually not debugging, but not debugging, just to kind of see what is the problem in my code. And I could sit there and stare at the code forever, but okay, so let's see what we've got. I forgot a dot there. All right, good. Let's go ahead and, actually, no, it's still not done. Oh, temp pup, I'm not naming things just right. So let's see, temp pup, there it is, puppy. So let's go ahead and read our file. Well, it looked like it read it correctly so the file was read correctly, but there's something wrong with the puppy array. Um, oh, I don't think I didn't 
increment total puppies. So I'm going to go ahead and increment total puppies. I'm going to comment out my count because I think that was the error. Let's read it. All right, great. So I had a variable in there, total puppies, which was the total puppies that I calculated from the file size, but I deleted that code so it wasn't there. So I went ahead and just incremented it. Now, the reason I did this, and I guess I could have used the puppy CTR, the puppy counter, um, but just because I was sending it, I just went ahead and used that variable. Okay, so very, very simple little piece of code. It goes through and just reads the binary file, puts it into an array. But like I said, the total puppies is not 10,000. It's only like maybe what, 12, 15? So that's really inefficient code. Um, it, so what would you say to do? Well, to make it, well, I shouldn't say inefficient. It's more like wasteful. It's wasting memory. So what I could do is I could say, okay, well, let's just put 20 in there. Well, now your program is only useful for people that have had in their entire lifetime 20 puppies, or maybe they want to use this for more than just puppies. Maybe they want to use this for snakes and birds and cats and weasels and whatever pets they might have had, turtles. And so people could have hundreds of pets. So you've got to figure out what is the optimal size for my array to meet everybody's requirements. Impossible. It's not possible to do that. You have no idea as a developer and you want to sell your program to as many people as you can. So this is just not the way to do it. The way to do it is with a dynamically allocated array. So with a dynamically allocated array, instead of creating an array of puppies like we did earlier, it looks something like this. These are static puppies. You do this. You create a pointer to a puppy, and then you specify the name of the array. Now remember, an array is a pointer. So if you don't remember that, go back and take a look at my array video on advanced C++. But an array is a pointer. So what we're doing here is we're creating a puppy pointer called puppy array, and we're making it equal to null. Now, it's not an array yet, because we haven't actually done anything with it. However, if I go down in my code, you will see right here, puppy array is being assigned the address of a puppy of size total puppies. This is a dynamically allocated array. And what's actually happening here? When I say puppy equals new puppy, square bracket total puppies, I'm saying allocate the number in total puppies, let's say it's 50, allocate that many puppies and assign it to the array, puppy array. So it's gonna allocate, so let's say total puppies is 10, it's gonna allocate 10 puppies, all contiguous in memory, and it's gonna send the first puppy's pointer or address to the puppy array array. Now, how do we know how many items or how many puppies are inside of the puppy file? Or how many, how do we come up with that total puppies variable? Well, I've got that in here as well. What I do is I open the file, and this is the same as the previous code. I open the file. I do a thing called seekg. What that does is it moves the get pointer, it moves the read pointer of that file all the way to the end of the file. So it moves it zero bytes from the end of the file. And then I do this thing called tell g. So I say puppy file dot tell g. And what that does is it returns the position in the file, the numeric value. So if you've got one puppy and you go to the end, that will be 56 because the size of one puppy is 56. If you have two puppies, it'll be 112. So the end of the file will be 112 bytes from the beginning of the file. So that's what end file position is. And then what I did was I said total puppies is equal to the end file position. So if I had 100 puppies, it would be 500, it'd be 5,600 if I had 100 puppies. 
it would be 5,600 defined, deci divided by the size of a puppy, which is 56. So 5,600 divided by 56 is 100. So total puppies will contain 100 puppies. I see out that, and then I allocate that dynamically allocated array. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to allocate the array when I find out how many puppies I have. Now this might slow down processing a little bit at the very beginning of this loop of the read, but you save a lot of memory area because you're not allocating static puppies, you're allocating dynamic puppies. And this one right here, this takes me back to the beginning. That's what iOS colon colon beg is. It takes me back to the beginning of the file so I can then now be reading the puppies. So if you're not really sure what this is all about, you might want to take a look in the Gaddis book, it's chapter 12, but if I haven't done yet, and as of, the, as of the recording of this video, I hadn't done it yet, but this is random file I.O., input and output, and it goes through and, and shows you how to do that. Now, the only other thing that we need for this code is this right here. We need to delete the array of puppies. So you say delete, open and close square bracket, and then the name of the puppy pointer or the puppy array pointer. And that's what that delete does. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna run it, let me build it first. And I'm going to right click on it, profiling tools, profile with Valgrind, and I'm gonna read the puppy file, and then I'm gonna exit. And Valgrind says no memory leaks. And the reason that there's no memory leaks is also this. Oh actually no. Yeah, it's this right here. So I deleted the puppy array. That's why I had no memory leaks. If I comment that out, and I build it, and then I profile it, I'm gonna read my puppy array, I'm gonna exit. It says I've lost 616 bytes because I had that many puppies in the file. I never deleted the array so I have a big memory leak. The program ran fine, but now I've got a memory leak. I've lost 616 bytes that I can never get back until I reboot the operating system. Unless, of course, the operating system handles that, and some of them do and some of them don't, but you can't assume anything. Now, what if I never do this? What if I never allocate it? And how could that be? So I'm gonna right click and say, Profiling Tools Valgrind. I'm just gonna exit out. And if I go to Valgrind, found no problems. Why did it find no problems? Because I never told the program to read the file and it never allocated the puppies. So not only did I never even allocate the, the, the array, I didn't have to delete it. So that is a dynamically allocated array. Also notice that the print function never changed because an array is a pointer. So because we dynamically allocated the array and we put it into that pointer, as far as the function print puppies is concerned, this is an array even though it's a pointer. Once again, that is a dynamically allocated array of puppies. So now let's take a look at the third method of doing this, and this is with a dynamically allocated array of puppy pointers. Oh my God, why would you ever want to do this? Well, what if you want to allocate puppies dynamically and then put those pointers, put those addresses of each one of those puppies into an array. How could you possibly do that? And why would you do that? Well, maybe you've got a limited amount of memory and you want to only allocate the puppies when you need them. So that would be a dynamically allocated array of dynamically allocated array of puppies. I think what we need to do is we need to take a look at a little diagram. Let me draw you a little diagram of this. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got my iPads. I got a little iPad program here, and I don't remember what program this is. I think it's note taking X or something like that. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of diagram the three different ways that we do this. And I'm gonna have my head down, so I'm gonna kind of get rid of my, my facial video here. Uh, so it's not distracting to you. So let's take a look at the first way. So the first way was 
And again, let me get this. So the first way was a static array of puppies. So how did we do a static array of puppies? Well, what we did was we basically said puppy, and I'm just going to shorthand this, array of 10,000. So what actually happens when we do that? Well, literally, memory is allocated 10,000 puppies from puppy 0 to 10,000. Each one is 56 bytes long, if I've got my puppy size right. Every single one is 56 bytes long, so we have 10,000 times 56 is 560,000. When we did it that way, and if we only had 10 puppies in the file, we wasted a lot of stuff over here. I mean, a lot. So. That is a very inefficient way of doing it, and it, it just isn't a good way of doing it. Now, let's take a look at the other way that we did puppies, is that we did it with a dynamically allocated array of puppies. So what does a dynamic allocated array of puppies look like? And this was number two. And let's go back to that nice. So a dynamic allocated array of puppies. Oops. This program is trying to fix, I'm not sure why I'm saying fuffies, puppies. So what we did was we created a puppy pointer called, I don't know, what did we call it? Puppy array? And we made that equal to null PTR. Then what we did was we figured out how many puppies were in the file by using the seek and the tell. And that gave us a value. And then we said puppy array. I don't know why it keeps moving me. So we said puppy array is equal to new puppy array of size, I don't know, total puppies. So what happens in this case? Well, if we only have 10 puppies in the file, it is just going to allocate our 10 puppies. And I don't know if I have 10 there, but it's going to go 0 through 9. So it's only going to allocate our 10 puppies. It's not going to give us puppies that we don't want. All right? And that's and then but then you process it just like a normal array. Now the problem with that though is that if you do that, you then have to delete the puppy array at the end of your program to make absolutely sure that you are not creating a memory leak, which is a again, which is a huge problem. By the way, I don't have a mental problem with memory leaks. I'm just saying that's the problem. That is a big problem. Okay, so what is the next, what is the third method? We're going to create the third method is we're going to create, and I don't know if you noticed, but on the second, first and second method, all of the puppy puppies were contiguous. They were all in the same area of memory from the from one address to the end, they were all attached to each other. The th third way is a dynamic array of puppy pointers. Not poppy, puppy pointers. So how do we do that? How do we create a dynamic array of puppy pointers? Well, this is going to be weird. I'm going to say puppy asterisk, asterisk, puppy array. And we probably should put equals null PTR. Whoa, 
What is that? Well, what that is, that is that I want to create a puppy pointer, which points to a puppy pointer. That's what those two asterisks mean. I want to create a puppy pointer that points to a puppy pointer. It's no different than saying, I want to create a puppy pointer that points to a puppy. What you're doing instead is you're saying, I want to create a puppy pointer that points to a puppy pointer. And what we would do is we would allocate our array. We would say puppy array equals a puppy pointer of size total puppies. Now what does that do? That creates an array, and let's go back to the 10, that'll create an array of 10 puppy pointers. I don't know, is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I got it right. So that'll give us an array of 10 puppy pointers. So not puppies, but puppy pointers. So how do we actually add puppies to that? So the way we do that is that we have another variable, which is a puppy pointer called temp puppy. And then we say temp puppy equals new puppy. We set all the values of the puppy, of the puppy variable temp puppy. So we set like the name and the breed and the weight and the age. And then we say puppy array of index, let's do the first one, is equal to the temp puppy. So what will happen is this line of code right here, this will recreate a puppy somewhere in memory. This line of code will put the address of that puppy into that position zero of the array. And then we have to do these two lines of code again for the second puppy. And then we have to change this index variable to one to go to the next one to two to go to the next one, to three to go to the next one. So you, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have non-contiguous puppy, puppies in memory, and their, their addresses are stored here inside of the puppy array of puppy pointers. Wow, lots and lots of drawing here, but that's actually the three different ways of creating an array like this. And why would you do it this way? You would do it this way because if you don't have a computer with a lot of memory and you can't allocate, you know, 10,000 puppies in a, non, in, a, in a dynamically allocated array of puppies or a static array of puppies, you might have to do something like this. And this happens, especially with embedded systems like your refrigerator or space probes, things like that. They have to do things like this. So let's actually take a look at the code. Okay, here we are back at our code and let's take a look at, at what this is all about. So what I did was I cr changed the menu. I had a write feature which allowed me to add puppies to my file. I still have the read, but I have a new read called pointer read from the puppy file. That's to read puppies out of the puppy file and put them in pointers, and that's what we're going to take a look at. So let's look for the P option here. There's the W, there's the R, and there's the P. Okay, so let's see how this works. So I open the puppy file just like I normally do. I check to see what the total number of puppies are in the file. We talked about that with the dynamically allocated array of puppies. Not puppy pointers, but dynamically allocated of puppies. And then what I did was I said, hey, 
make my puppy pointer array equal to a new array of puppy pointers, the size of which is total puppies. So that was the third option, the thing that I just drew. Um, I go back to the beginning of the file, and then the first thing I have to do is I have to create a new puppy in anticipation of reading the first puppy. So I create a new puppy, I read the first puppy. If I'm not in the file, I set the puppy pointer array at the position in that array which starts at zero. You can see it right here. And I put that address into that array. I increment the puppy counter. I create a new puppy in anticipation of reading the next line of code and this line of code reads it into that puppy pointer variable where it reads it into the puppy and the puppy pointer points to that puppy and then I go through and read it every time now I delete the puppy pointer here but because if I read the end of file there on this line of code right here if I read the end of file I have what I call a dangling pointer. I have a pointer that was allocated, but I never assigned it an actual address. So I, I can't, I have to delete it. So that'll happen every time. You always read before you continue the while loop. Um, and we got the end of file, but we've got this dangling puppy that we never put into the array. So we delete it right there. I close the file and I print the puppies, but now I had to change the function called print puppy pointers. And we'll look at that in just a moment. Now after the puppy pointers are printed, I now have to go through and delete every one of the puppies that I was pointing to in the array. So I have to delete each puppy and then I delete the array as a whole. This is how a vector works. A vector is a dynamically, dynamically allocated array. Actually, I think a vector is an array. It might be a linked list. I think a linked list in C++ works this way, where you create pointers to objects. Those pointers go into an array, and you make the array bigger or smaller. Uh, vectors may also work this way if you're dealing with pointers. So you're looking at the internals of some of the standard template library data structures inside of C++. So this deletes each separate pointer and this deletes the puppy array. And maybe I can show you that in the drawing uh, right after we talk about the print. So here's the print. We go back up here and instead of the print just taking a puppy array like the first one did, it's, it's accepting a puppy array of puppy pointers. That's that extra asterisk there. And then instead of the dot, we specify the dash greater than for that attribute within that structure, within that pointer. Now, how did we allocate the puppy pointer array? Right here. We said puppy asterisk asterisk puppy pointer array equals null pointer. So you put those two asterisks so that array doesn't contain puppies, it contains pointers to puppies, which are dynamically allocated. And I haven't run this for a while. Let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm gonna read from the puppy file. Okay, that's the normal one. That was the normal read. Now I'm going to pointer read. It works exactly the same. And then I'm going to exit out. Now I'm going to run this using valgrind, and I'm gonna use both options. I'm gonna read I'm going to pointer read and I'm going to exit and it says it found no problem. Now let's create a problem. I'm going to go ahead and just delete or I'm going to comment out this puppy pointer delete which deleted that dangling puppy and I'm going to run it in Valgrind and then exit it. And it says we have 56 bytes lost. That's that one puppy that we lost. Where did I comment that out? Right there. That's that one puppy because each puppy is 56 bytes long. So you got to put that in there to delete that dangling puppy. 
What happens if we comment out our for loop and we build it? We're going to have a much bigger problem because now we're not deleting all of our puppies. So let's puppy pointer read it, let's exit. Now we have a much larger problem. We did not delete all of those puppies that the array was pointing to. Now, what would this delete look like? Let's take a quick look at that. Okay, we're back on our diagram and it's kind of a messy diagram. So I guess I could get rid of it, but this might take me all day. So let's go ahead and just leave all that there. So what does the delete do? That for loop in the code that was deleting each puppy, what it was doing, it was deleting one at a time each puppy out of memory, just like, just like this. But notice I didn't show the deletion inside of the array. That's because those pointers are still there. They're still pointing to areas of memory that you've deleted. Now, when you delete the entire array, it makes that entire array unavailable to your code. And that's the same as the second option, which was a dynamically, array of, a dynamically allocated array of puppies. But what you might want to do is that you might want to put null PTR in every one of these locations in the array. So it's still not pointing to a puppy, which no longer exists because you deleted it. Let's take a look at that code. So here we are back at our code. Let's uncomment out those deletes. And this is where every puppy is deleted out of, not out of the array, it's deleted out of memory, but the pointer is still there. And let me actually show you how I can say that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count, see out. And what this will do is this will print out, even after I've deleted them, this will print what's left in that array. And, is, and let's go ahead and read. And then I'm gonna exit. And what didn't I do here? Oh, there it is. So it printed all the puppies when I exited out or no, it printed them. All right, I'm not exiting it out. This is in the code where I read it. And even though I deleted each puppy, the address is still there. And those addresses are not necessarily contiguous by any sense of it. They could be, they might be, but they probably not. So even though I deleted them, it's still outputting them as having an address. And if you try to access those addresses, you're gonna get a segmentation fault problem possibly. So how do you fix that? Well, when you delete the puppy, you then put into the puppy pointer array null PTR. And what that will do is not only does it, this line will delete the puppy, but this will tell your array, hey, there's no puppy there anymore. So I'm going to set your the address that you're storing null. And you might say, well, why do you need to do that when you're deleting the puppy pointer array right there? Well, what if you've got confidential data in memory and your array is pointing to it? This isn't going to delete or, or overwrite all of those addresses either. It's just going to say to your program, you no longer have access to that. So now, not only have, if you don't put null pointer in there, not only have you possibly have a memory issue, in this case, I don't think so, but you might have a security issue where you don't clear out the array, you haven't even cleared out the memory. So that's even another problem. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see how now all of the puppy addresses are now zero because we did this null PTR. Whew. So the way that I would look at this if I were you is start up, your, start up a project and take the code that I posted out on the description of this video and build it yourself, play with it, 
I hope you've got Linux running so you can do Valgrind or if you've got Windows use Dr. Memory and get used to this because this is something that you could be asked in an interview definitely because memory leaks are one of the biggest problems in computer science and code development especially lower level languages like C and C++ and assembler language assembly language uh, even Fortran and COBOL those lower level languages memory leaks are a problem that's why your windows at times gets so slow because there's so many memory leaks in an application that you might be running quite often so that's our discussion about dynamically allocated arrays and memory leaks hope to see you at the next video